Hello friends, this video on chemical kinetics part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The objective of this lesson is to define the average and instantaneous rate of the equation. We will express the rate of a reaction in terms of change in concentration of either reactants or product with time. We will distinguish between elementary and complex reaction. There are two types of reaction, elementary and complex reaction. We will discuss about these kinds of reactions. We will also differentiate between the molecularity and order of reaction. We will learn two different terms. One is the molecularity of the reaction, the other is the order of the reaction. We will learn these terms and we will try to differentiate between them. We will define rate constant for, equation, for a reaction. We will discuss the dependency of the rate of the reactions on concentration, temperature and catalyst on these three factors. We will derive the integrated rate equations for zero and first order equations only. We will determine the rate constants for zeroth and first order reactions. We will also understand collision theory. Let's start our chapter. See the only permanent thing in life is change. It is a very good saying. In chemistry also right, we are concerned about change. Any chemical reaction we talk about, there is nothing but a change. So we talk about any chemical reaction where let's suppose A plus B gives C plus D. These are my reactants A and B. On the right side I have my product. If we talk about any chemical reaction, we are worried about three things. First is the feasibility of the reaction, whether this reaction is feasible or not. For example, if I say height H2O gives H2 plus half O2, is this reaction feasible? Answer is no. It is a non-spontaneous reaction. But the other reaction, H2 plus half O2 gives H2O, yes, this is feasible. C plus O2 carbon dioxide, yes, feasible. So the first thing is the feasibility of the reaction. So that we can easily predict using thermodynamics. If I have delta G is less than zero, then I say it's a spontaneous reaction at a given temperature and pressure, then I say the reaction is feasible, right? Once feasibility is defined, we know, yes, but this particular reaction is feasible. Then the next question that comes to our mind is, what is the extent to which a reaction can happen, right? And the extent to which this reaction will move on the right hand side can easily be determined using equilibrium constants, chemical equilibrium constants. The first thing is feasibility, yes. We can use thermodynamics, delta G is less than zero, spontaneous, yes, it is feasible. Okay, if it is feasible, what is the extent? The extent can be determined using equilibrium constant. The next thing we are interested about a reaction is the speed of the reaction, how fast the reaction is, right? For example, if I talk about uh, H2 plus half O2 is water, how fast is this reaction? Or if I add sodium chloride in water, uh, solution how fast is this reaction correct or how slow is the reaction so speed of reaction is also very important and speed of reaction nothing but time taken by reaction to reach actually equilibrium so how to determine this so here comes chemical kinetics to help this right chemical kinetics help us to find speed of this reaction and in this chapter of chemical kinetics we'll be focusing more about speed of the reaction so to let me Repeat this once again, for a given reaction, we are concerned generally about three things, feasibility of the reaction, and that we can find from delta G using thermodynamics, extent to which reaction can happen, we can use find using equilibrium constant, and the speed of the reaction, and that is something we can find using chemical kinetics. So let's start our chapter, chemical kinetics. So what is chemical kinetics? Chemical kinetics is nothing but a branch of chemistry. It's nothing but this chemical kinetics is nothing but branch. It's one of the branch of chemistry. There's so many branch of chemistry, we know that. It's a branch of chemistry. And this branch deals with reaction rates. This deals with reaction rates. How fast is this reaction? How slow is the reaction? And to understand the reaction rates, it also de deals with reaction mechanism because once you understand the mechanism you can easily understand reaction rate 
You see this word kinetics that is derived from the Greek word kinesis. Kinesis. And that means movement. In physics, you must have used this word kinetic energy, energy due to movement, that also has come from this word kinesis. Correct? So let me repeat. In for a given reaction, we are concerned about three things. First is if it is visible or not, that we get from thermodynamics, delta G less than zero, that means it is a spontaneous reaction and it is feasible. The next is we want to know how far the reaction will go, that we can tell from the equilibrium constant. And the third thing we know, want to know is the rate of the reaction, how speed or fast the reaction will go, that for that we use chemical kinetics. So having understood what is chemical kinetics, let's understand why do we need to study chemical kinetics. So if you see the engines of the cars, we have petrol engines, we have diesel engines, we have LPG engines, and we have different, you know, in fact, we have uh, high cars which runs on, uh, the engines which runs on batteries. Forget the in battery one, but the carbon which runs on fuel cell, carbon which runs on petrol, car which runs on diesel, and which runs on LPG. So if you see, these cars will have different engines because the engine construction will depend on the rate of burning of this fuel, whether petrol, diesel, LPG or hydrogen. So if we know the rate at which the petrol, diesel or LPG burns, we can design the engine. And if you see, the engines are different. If you have a petrol car, you can't use a diesel in that. Why? Because the engine is different. The engine is designed in such a way that it takes care of the rate of burning of petrol or diesel and they have different rate of burning. So it's good to understand the rate of a reaction for designing such kind of things. So if you are planning to move into this automobile industry and planning to become an engineer, so in that case it's good to know the chemical kinetics because that will tell you how to design an engine that is optimum for petrol, diesel or LPG. Okay. So if you see the tomato, tomato or any vegetable for sake, if you see, that gets spoiled faster. This is faster in hot season. In summer season, this it gets spoiled very fast. Why? Have you ever thought why? It is because of the rate of reaction. In summer, the temperature is more. In temperature is more and thus the reaction is fast. Right? The reaction is fast. So, fresh tomato to a spoiled tomato is nothing but a reaction. Summer, the temperature is more. So reaction is fast and we'll see the relation between temperature and reaction in the next few slides. But just understand that spoiling of tomato or any vegetable is a reaction. And spoiling of vegetables or fruit is a huge loss to economy. But chemistry can help us to uh, preserve these fruits for longer duration. If you see refrigerator is a good example. We keep our vegetables and fruits in the refrigerator. It doesn't spoil so easily. The temperature is less there. So this is because the chemical kinetics, the knowledge that the rate of the reaction depends on temperature. The rate of reaction, and we'll see this rate of reaction is directly proportional to temperature. You increase the temperature, the rate of reaction increases. In fact, you increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius, the rate of reaction doubles. We'll, we'll see all those things in the next few slides. But thus, because understanding the chemical kinetics, the scientists have found out refrigerator and that's a very useful thing in our house correct for dental filling we need something which set uh, for material here right to fill this we need something which settle down very very fast because the patient can't, can't wait for one day it has to be very fast so we need to design such kind of materials to design such kind of material it's good to know understand chemical kinetic then only you can understand or you can design a material which has a very fast reaction and which settles down very very fast. Correct. If you see the old monuments, if you want to find the life of this old monument, we generally use carbon dating process. Carbon dating process. And we use this half-life concept. How much time it takes for uh, C14 carbon to decompose. There are so many concepts we use to actually find the age of our ancient monuments. And there chemical kinetics plays a role. Chemical kinetics helps us actually to find age of old monuments.
right? So for any given reaction, it helps us to control a very fast reaction. Reaction which happens very fast rate, chemical kinetics help us control the very fast reaction. Also, it helps us speed up. It helps us speed up a slow reaction. If you see the medicine, the whole medicine industry is based on chemical kinetics. This medicine does what? It increase or decrease concentration a certain reaction in the body. This medicine is sometimes they block enzymes. We have studied this in class. In fact, in class 12 itself, we have studied this where we have seen the role of catalyst and they uh, manipulate the reaction rate, right? And everything comes as part of chemical kinetics. This medicine helps to increase or de decrease certain reaction in the body, right? You see, the rusting of iron is a very good example of chemical kinetics. It is a little uh, slow process, but again, here also we are interested in what is the rate at which the iron is getting rusted. So if you want to know the rate at which the iron is getting rusted, we use chemical kinetics. And with the chemical kinetics, we come to know, okay, the rate is dependent on water and air. So if we paint it and we avoid water and air uh, to be in direct touch with or to be in direct contact with this iron, we can avoid corrosion. It does, it helps to avoid corrosion also because chemical kinetics will tell you everything. What is the rate? Of this reaction and on what factors it will depend. Right? When we are sick, we lose weight. Why? Because when we are sick, the temperature in our body is high. When we are having fever, the temperature is high. Temperature is high, that means the reaction rate is more. Reaction rate is more in the body, that means you lose fat. You lose fat. When you lose fat, that means you lose weight. So, so many things, if you see, the rate of reaction has important role. So with this, let's start our chapter on chemical kinetics. Before we start the chapter, let's give you some examples of the slow reactions, fast reaction. A good example of a slow, very, very slow reaction is conversion of diamond to graphite. And if you see, both diamond and graphite are made of carbon. The only thing is the difference in the structure. But actually, graphite is more stable, more stable form. And if you keep a diamond for millions of years, it will convert into graphite. It's a very, very slow process. It's a very, very slow process. Very, very slow process. Right? If you keep a diamond for millions of years, it will convert into graphite. This is my graphite. Another example of a slow reaction is not very slow as compared to diamond to graphite. A slower reaction is rusting of iron. You have the iron, you keep it for some time, it becomes uh, rusted. This is also very pretty slow process even it may take six months to a year depending on the circumstances or depending on the amount of moisture and water available but it is a slow process if we talk about the fast reaction or moderate speed reaction spoiling of tomato is a good example of moderate speed reaction uh, you keep a tomato for almost uh, four to five days the tomato is spoiled or tomato or any vegetable this is a good example of moderate speed reaction if we talk about the fast reaction melting of ice you keep the ice Within maybe 10 minutes, it will melt, or even a minute, it will melt, depending on again the room temperature. So, these were some of the examples of the slow, fast, and moderate reaction, just to make you feel that the chemical kinetics is all about the rate of reactions. It's all about the rate of reactions. That is what we'll be studying in this whole chapter. Right? I mean, the next example of a fast reaction is mixing of ink and water. You have this water, you put some two, three drops of ink in that, you'll see immediately it will get dissolved. Very, very fast reaction. Or even uh, you have this sodium chloride, common salt you put in water and it will dissolve immediately. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.